Hey, and welcome back to another Sequence Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, and today I got the lovely dietitians of Sequence, two of them anyway, we got a bunch, but uh, we got Lillian Yang and Summer Kessel with us today, and we're going to be talking about all about nutrition for weight loss in the context of just in general weight loss and also in the context of weight loss or obesity medicines, specifically uh, GLP-1 agonists. So welcome, Summer and Lillian, uh, to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Well, of course, you guys are awesome. You guys are are some some of our top. Lillian's the head of our uh, dietitian crew, uh, and Summer's come on recently, but She's my little social media buddy. We we like to mess around with people on Twitter. Um, We've been so, fighting the same people on Twitter for what ten years now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So I think the first thing I want to start off is is w- with your clinical experience with weight loss and nutrition in general as dietitians. Um, maybe first start with Lily and about you know kind of your journey through helping people lose weight with nutrition, and what your approach is. Sure. So actually, before I came to Sequence, I was working at an outpatient center where we had primarily a lot of endocrinologists, a couple of general practitioners, and a couple of bariatric surgeons. So people from all sorts of backgrounds um, and a large majority would want to lose weight, whether it's a little bit of weight or a lot of weight to improve their health. Um what I found was that across the board, a lot of people were either intimidated or overwhelmed or didn't know where to start versus people who were super excited about something that their friend maybe recommended them do or a book about like a cleanse or, you know, keto and from my perspective, I really just wanted to try to take people back to basics and getting them to sort of understand a little bit of foundational knowledge about how nutrition, food, like what does a calorie mean? What is a protein or a carb? Should you be scared of any of these things? What do they do in the body? Because a lot of us don't actually get any knowledge on that. It's not like we learn it in school. Yeah. So really trying to like simplify a couple of the foundational things about what food is and how it works in the body to help them understand you don't really have to do anything extreme. Maybe we just make a a couple of little changes and see how you feel because overall I want you to feel good and I want you to feel healthy and not end up maybe causing like damage in some way if you cut a lot of foods out. Um, and really just trying to guide them on a more flexible, open-minded approach cool. and showing them that they don't have to go to extremes to see some results. Did, did any of your clients go to extremes and like it though? Is that possible? <laughs> some people do, I, you know, more power to them, I suppose. Yeah. But I would also say like a lot of those results were more short term. They're like, yeah, oh, it's so well for a month or two. And I'm like, let me know if you ever want to change your mind. I can help yeah. you. Like, if you get tired of this, I can certainly help you like transition into other ways to do this. Yeah, we see that a lot. Summer and I are on, on Twitter and like the anecdotes that we see, it's like, well, I did it this way and that's the only way that would work. And it's like, it, it worked for you, but like it's actually not common that that approach would work. So, Summer, what, what's been your, like, what's been your journey through like, you know, RD school and then uh, helping people lose weight and all that through nutrition. We love all the in one studies, right? On Twitter, yeah. that people self publish. Um, yeah. My journey to becoming a dietitian was a long, complex one. I was always very overweight, struggled with my weight my whole life. I was actually a pharmacy tech in a hospital for 10 years before oh, I was wow. a dietitian. Um, so I lost a lot of weight doing all of the extremes. I had a vegan phase. I had a keto phase. I've done Weight Watchers, right? So I had my own personal ongoing journey and could never sustain anything for more Mm. than two or three months. I was yo-yo dieting. I was professional at that. So I said, let me go back to school and learn how to do this the right way. (laughs) 
And so it was kind of a selfish motivation to go back to school. I still wanted to work in healthcare. Um, I love to eat. I love food. So I went back to school to be a dietitian. And everything I've learned and then my own personal experience with weight loss, I feel best and my members and clients feel best when we get back to those basics. And there are these common principles and these best practices that if people could master those like low hanging fruit, right? Like, are you eating vegetables? I know that's controversial now, but are you eating vegetables? Well, it's, are you eating- not, it's not controversial in the general not population, us, but on, on the internet, on the internet and certain right? little groups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So are you eating fruits and vegetables? Are you eating lean proteins? Are you cooking at home more often than you're eating out? Like, what is your <laughs> life like? What does your time look like? What is your schedule? Those kinds of outside factors have more of an impact on people's eating than do you know that chicken breast is good for you? Of course I do. But how do I actually get that person to a point where they're eating that consistently and finding something that's realistic and sustainable, but also works is tough because um, everybody wants the quick fix and explaining to people. Sometimes I have to say, yo, it took me 10 years to figure out how to lose a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not an overnight thing, but let me help you get started in the right place so that you're working with foundational knowledge. Like Lillian said, that is actually true. And you're not getting distracted by flashy things on the internet that sound great, but in real life practice, maybe won't work out. I call it shiny object syndrome. And this is with business anyway. I'm, I'm in, you know, an entrepreneur with lots of different projects. And then also it, it's, it, it can relate to fitness as well. We you know, hear about keto, we hear about plant-based, you know, and those aren't mutually exclusive. You can do technically a, a keto plant-based. It's really hard. But then we hear about fasting and we hear about this. But like, what are the principles? Let's, let's talk about the, like the main principle of like energy balance. Right. Now this, in some circles, this is, controversial, but it's, it's not actually, this is like, this is nutrition, weight loss, one oh one. I, I make memes and tweets about energy balance. Now calories in calories out energy balance, this whole thing, while it's a good principle, it's what you guys are talking about are the actual strategies and skills to implement it. But what do you, do you guys teach energy balance? Like the whole idea of like, Hey, if you, eat fewer calories and you burn, you're going to lose weight. That in itself isn't helpful, but here are the ways to actually make that happen. Did you guys discuss that with your clients at all or, or patients? Um, I'd be interested to hear. Um, I think that my general approach is I actually don't use the word calorie a lot in my sessions or my coaching because then it, it sort of becomes more scientific and technical. Yeah. And easily apply to what your food actually is and what you should be eating is very like numbers focused. Yeah. But in terms of like, oh, well, the recommendations that I have, um, they may guide you towards more of that calorie deficiency that we want for weight loss. Um, for example, hey, I noticed that your plate already has that protein and the carbs. Now, can you tell me more about the portion of those two? Um, do you think it would be helpful to add a serving of vegetables to your dinner? And so using nutrition and food to sort of explain how to get to that deficit without ne necessarily mentioning the word calories, because I, I find that once people hear the word calories, they often become very focused on that. Yeah. So you focus on dietary patterns kind of first, which I think is great. What about you, Summer? Yeah. So... It really depends on the person, but sometimes they'll come to me saying, I've been eating 1200 calories and I can't mm. lose weight. Right? That's, that's I mean, classic, by the way. Let's talk about that because do you actually know how to count calories accurately and consistently? Are you weighing and measuring? Do you understand portion sizes? Do you understand where your calories are coming from? Because a lot of people think they're eating 1200 calories, but when you take a really good diet recall, uh, that's like more like 1600, 1800, because they don't measure the salad dressing and they, their handful of nuts is not one ounce. It's more like four ounces, right? So sometimes it is useful to explain to folks that the calories do matter because the portion sizes matter. Um, 
because you're not going to lose weight if you're overeating. That's just a fact. Um, so when they think that they're calorie counting accurately, but they're not, I think that's a great opportunity to provide some education, but it really, like I said, it depends on where the person is in their journey. Some folks come to us having done very specific macro counting to the number, right. Mm -hmm. For years. And they're still frustrated because they're not losing weight. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe it's time to do a different approach. Maybe it yeah. is time to think more about dietary patterns and diet quality and, mm -hmm volume of vegetables and that sort of thing. Because when you do get down to the nitty gritty with people who count calories, they count calories great, like Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday aren't counted. And so, or they get in these binge restrict type patterns. Yeah. So yeah, I'll talk about calories with folks if that's where their experience comes from, because sometimes there's a lot of misinformation around counting calories and all calories are created equal. And so I count my calories, but I'm still not eating a high quality diet. I don't understand why I feel terrible, right? That there's more to nutrition than calories is sometimes a really important conversation that I want to help you lose weight. I say this a lot. I want to help you lose weight. I care about your weight, but weight loss and nutrition, good nutrition are not the same thing. They can right. coexist but I care about your bones and your muscles and your hair and your skin. And I want you to be, you know, feel good and have energy to exercise and participate in your life and not feel miserable. So there's a happy place for people where they're in a slight calorie deficit, right? Like I want folks to eat as much as possible. That is a deficit to lose weight not slash it to the bare minimum for this huge weight loss right off the bat, because that's not sustainable. Yeah. Basically you're trying to help people lose weight without being miserable. That's, <laughs> I that's want, the, I mean, you that's still enjoy that. Like, dieting is not everything, right? Like what you eat, what you weigh, your weight loss goals should not be the most important thing in anyone's life. It's important. Yeah. It's a, it's a matter of self care and taking care of your health. But if it's all consuming and it's getting in the way of your relationships and your experiences and and your family life or you know other goals that you may have for yourself, like we gotta take it back. We gotta we gotta get realistic and figure out ways that this can work for you. Because if dieting and exercise and nutrition becomes all you do, then is that your life goal? Probably not. Most people wanna lose weight to do other things, yeah. not to focus on losing weight forever. That's a good point. I often say for people who are super focused on that, I'm like, well, okay, what do you want your goal to be out of this, but not your weight goal? Like, what do you want the weight loss to bring you in mm -hmm. terms of changes in your life? Is it mobility? Is it being able to run after your kids or after your dog? Um, be able to like go on hikes with the family or just feel more comfortable and confident with yourself? And you probably heard of like the cookie diet before or like maybe people who are thin but not healthy and don't feel great. So it's nutrition, like Summer was saying, is more than just about lower calories. It's also about nutrient density. It's also about like feeling good day to day. Yeah. So for, for people listening, people will say a calorie is not a calorie. A calorie is a unit of energy and certain foods have different macro, what are called macronutrients. Those are protein, carbs, and fat. These macronutrients contain calories, you know, within the bonds of their chemical structure. These macro, what, what they're really saying when they say a calorie is not a calorie is what they're saying is a macronutrient is not a macronutrient. Protein will not be metabolized and used the same way fat or carbs are. Carbs and fat aren't metabolized the same way. In the end, it is energy balance for weight loss, but because these food, these macronutrients are metabolized differently, a piece of steak, lean sirloin will not be metabolized the same way as a cookie will be. They will not have the same satiating properties. You're probably going to want to continue eating the cookie. For me, it's kettle potato chips. I love you know, the salty, crispy, um, oily, starchy uh, food. So they don't have the same satiating properties. They don't have the same nutrient density. Um, they won't be metabolized it's the same way in the diet, uh, in, in, in your body. And then on top of that, you know, even if you just took the macronutrients and put them into like, you know, liquid, let's say you, you zizz it up in the, in the blender, you can have the same macronutrient, uh, you can have different macronutrients, but the, the 
what you guys are talking about is an actual dietary pattern, the whole food uh, pattern. So even if you had the same amount of carbs from like, let's say broccoli versus, you know, a soda where you put some Metamucil in the soda, that would be disgusting. Let's say, so you have broccoli, they have same amount of carbs and fiber as soda with a bunch of Metamucil in it. It won't be metabolized the same way. You won't have the same effects. So I think all those things are very important that you guys bring up some good points. What about, so the whole reason we, you know, at sequence, we add in medicine to basically help once you get, you know, people are trying to focus on their diet, they're trying to improve using a whole food uh, approach, dietary patterns, they can get to a point where they're still not satiated, they're still craving certain foods. So we add in these obesity medicines that target the centers in the brain. Now, what is what is your approach? Does it change when it comes to nutrition once they're on one of these medicines? And I think I don't want to brag, but you you two have um, more experience than ninety nine point nine percent of RDS out there when it comes to managing those on these medicines, just because of the way uh, because we're a leader in in this uh, field. So, um, tell us about your approach once they're on one of these medicines. So I think this is when it actually becomes really helpful for a member to speak with a dietitian because everyone has a very unpredictable response to the medication. Some people may, may not feel any differences at all when they start. Some people feel a huge change, suppression of appetite, maybe more side effects that are unpleasant. So it really depends on the individual okay. person. Um, I will say that a lot of people who reach out to us are actually experiencing a lot of suppression of appetite. So it almost becomes more like we need to make sure you're still getting enough food and enough nutrients in at this point. And in that case, my approach certainly changes from how do we include more potentially like filling and voluminous foods through fiber, vegetables, fruit, enough protein to what are like the real essentials that we need, like water, protein. Um, and if you can get fruits and vegetables in, awesome. If you can't, we may need to think about supplementing with a vitamin um, or we may need to think about like can we blend your protein shake with a fruit or vegetable to make it more nutrient dense? So for a lot of people who have really suppressed appetite, it's more about how do we make it easier for you to get those nutrients in? Because we also don't want to become like, we don't want to eat so little where you're just not feeling well, you're feeling really fatigued. Fatigue is a side effect of the medication, but a lot of people also probably don't realize that just not eating a lot can definitely make you feel tired because calories are energy. Mm -hmm. So the approach really is, tell me what you're eating now. Tell me how you feel in terms of energy. How's your digestion? And then once we go through those things, I can figure out, all right, well, first, maybe you tell me what you think you would like to work on. And then let's see if you like any of the recommendations that I have, because I really like to involve them in the whole process. I don't want to just be like, I'm a dietitian, so you should eat blah, 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 blah. You should also be very involved with telling me what you'd like to prioritize and how you would like to feel. So you're very patient centered. I like to hear that if you're listening, we care about you. <laughs> We're going to take you into account. That's awesome. Thanks, Lillian. Yeah, Summer, I mean, you have many... you. Yeah, I was going to say you have a, you have some other experiences if you want to yeah. share. Um, How many your... times have folks gone to the doctor's office said, "I want to lose weight," and the doctor's like, "Yeah, move more, eat less. Here's a handout, mm -hmm. baby. Um, do this." And then the person's like, "I don't like any of these foods." And I don't know how to cook. How am I, how am I supposed to do this? Right? So it's very patient centered. I need to know what you're capable of doing, what you're willing to do, what you can afford, what's, what's valuable to you with regards to food. What's a, what are you willing to give up? What are you not willing to give up? Those are really important conversations because, um, you know, so many people really value like family dinner right? And they cook for their kids and their whole family. And that's part of their personality and how they show love for their family. And they're like, I still want to be able to cook for my family. And I'm like, absolutely. 
we can still eat all of these same foods because now you're on this medication that's going to help you control your portions and your appetite. And maybe we could talk about how you're going to incorporate more vegetables into that meal or instead of beef, maybe we're going to switch to a leaner protein, but please enjoy your dinner with your family, right? Yeah. So folks are really scared. I think when they come to us as dietitians that we're going to give them a list of things they can and cannot eat. And we're going to take away all their favorite foods. Um, and that's absolutely not the case. It's interesting too, on the GLP medications, how folks now have a different relationship with food than they have in the past. And so now they can have, they feel like their binges and their cravings are better controlled. So now they feel safer around food when they have it in the past. And that's been my experience too. Um, as a, I was a member of Sequence before I was an RD at Sequence and I'm on a GLP-1 medication. And I, like you were saying, Spencer, like the previous, I was doing all the things. I had the slight calorie deficit. I was a dietitian. I'd already lost a hundred pounds. I had 20, 30 more to go. And I could never get there because my appetite was insatiable and my cravings and my binge behaviors were just out of control sometimes. And it would take extreme effort and focus and sacrifice to move the needle to lose five or 10 pounds. And then one fun vacation and it'd be right back to where I started, right? Mm. And so what's really cool about working with folks on these medications is now they can actually implement the lifestyle that they want to implement. So everybody's always had good intentions. They know that they should eat three balanced meals a day. But that appetite, that hunger, those cravings, the binge behaviors would get in the way of that and be distracting. The People talk a lot about the food chatter, the food noise, where food would call to them. So now they're in a place where food doesn't call to them. They're not thinking about food constantly. They're not doing this like, I call it like mental gymnastics, right, in their brain about what they can and cannot have. And so when presented with a cookie platter at a party, they can have one and stop at one and be like, meh, I'm done and move on, which is like this insane experience that they've never been able to have before. Because me, I was never a one cookie person, right? I'd be like, oh, all foods fit. A cookie, in my mind, a cookie is 120 calories. I can still achieve a calorie deficit while eating one cookie. The cookie is not the problem. The problem is that I can never stop at one cookie. I would be sneaking myself back to the table to get more I'm like who does that right people who struggle with that appetite. most people, <laughs> most people most a lot people. of people but we're so shamed about our food behaviors yeah. now in this world that nobody talks about it like yeah, yeah i had a problem with food and interestingly i don't think i realized i had a problem a little bit with alcohol too i could never stop at just one drink and being on glp medications i don't even want to drink anymore which is just like that's cool. That's a bizarre experience, but it's so cool to work with people now who are now in this mental place where they're ready to make change and yeah. it's easy to make change. And the more they make that change and they realize they can do it, the more they develop that like self-efficacy that they're capable, the more motivated they are and the more likely they are to stick to it. And then it becomes a lifestyle, like a behavior change that they can sustain versus some fad diet that they're motivated for for two weeks and then they fall off of. It's really cool. It's really fun to work with this population because all that mental stuff doesn't get in the way anymore. Yeah. It's really we talk, fun. talk about how, so like without GLP-1 or whatever medicines, your job as RDs is to help patients, clients navigate this obesogenic environment. Right. Now with the medicines, they can much more easily do it. Then they don't even have to. So I always talk about donut, Dan, bringing the, the donuts to work and you're trying to stay on your diet, you know, nutrition, you're trying to stick to your whole food, you know, uh, nutrition plan, dietary pattern, and you're doing it very well. And, but the donuts are calling to you. They're always oh, right there in your face. Cause he's bringing it to the, um, or cookie Carol, whoever. Yeah. They're bringing these yummy foods that just like you can stay away for enough time. And eventually it's like, oh, just give me your stress a little bit. Something knocks you over a little bit. But the medicines, basically what you're describing and what my patients describe, 
they basically help you go, no, I don't need that. So it's yeah. really cool. It's really cool. It's like, it's like they put up a wall that gives you that like extra two minutes you need to make a good decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. It takes that impulse to just grab it and eat it. I'm able to say, meh, I'm looking forward to my lunch in an hour. I don't need it. It's the same donuts he brings every day and week. They're not any better or any different than they will be next week. I don't need it. Right. And before yeah. it would be like, I hope people leave a whole bunch behind that I can take them at the end of the day. <laughs> That's awesome. What about, okay. What about side effects that people get? Like you were talking about just complete fullness and just trying to get in enough nutrients. What about side effects from these medicines that people come to you uh, looking for dietary pattern help of like, what should I eat? I'm not feeling great. Cause we refer to you, to y'all all the time. Yeah. I think the most common side effects are certainly like, nausea. Um, not a lot of people come to me with extreme nausea, but at least a little bit of queasiness mm -hmm. and discomfort and feeling like there's no foods that are appealing to them. So it's hard for them to even choose something to eat, which is why they revert to a protein shake. Um, another super common one is constipation, um, which can be because of the medication, but also with such little food and also not getting an, as much fiber as you were getting before, not as much water as you were getting before, that can be very uncomfortable, especially if it goes on for a couple of days at a time. So for nausea, um, I actually find that an, a totally empty stomach doesn't make it much better. So at least having something in there as a cushion is really helpful. Um, at this point, I'm telling people like, if you really feel like you can't choke down a chicken salad, don't worry about eating a chicken salad. If yeah. you only want saltine crackers because you don't feel well, there's nothing wrong with that. Often dry toast, saltine crackers, rice, some sort of carb that maybe you don't think is something you should be having is appropriate because you're dealing with a side effect and a symptom that you have. So lots of um, like snacky type dry things. For sure, if you, if you feel like you can get that protein shake in for some nutrients, go ahead and do so. Um, make sure you're having water, but Certain things that you think of to help with other types of nausea, like ginger chews, ginger tea, those can also help either warm beverages or ice cold beverages can help. Some people feel like bubbly drinks like a seltzer makes them feel a little bit better for nausea. But if it really does get to a point where it's interfering with your daily life, like you have to call off sick from work, then that's something that you should definitely reach out to the clinician for and see what they recommend. Um, and then for the constipation aspect of things, it's hard already for most people to get the recommended amount of fiber in their diet, like 25 to 30 grams a day. Um, there's... I usually tell people like there's no shame and no harm if you need to take some sort of fiber supplement like a psyllium husk through metamucil or something like that um of course if it becomes anything if, if you wanted to just reach out to your clinician to double check that's always a good idea I highly recommend that's what i love about the sequence platform though it's like everything's in a chat box you can just quickly reach out to someone you're not playing phone tag um, and get an answer really quick so focus on the fiber, focus on the water, but there's usually no harm in taking like a fiber supplement at the same time to help with that. Cool. Yeah. We had a, um, if anybody's listening, we had a whole podcast with Dr. Danielle all about side effects. Uh, so if, if you, if you're having side effects, you can listen to that one, but we, we go over what we, you know, we talk about the dietitians and then what we would do as clinicians. So what about summer? What about you? Do you, I mean, you've personally, I don't know if you've experienced any of these side effects and what helps you, but so between I, you I and your know, clients. Yeah, I think it's important too to note on the side effects is usually early on when we're starting out getting used to the medication and that that's the reason we titrate up the doses for a lot of these medications is because there really shouldn't be persistent life altering side effects 
through this process. And if you are having significant side effects and they don't seem to resolve, that's definitely worth talking to the clinician about because most folks do experience a little bit of nausea, queasiness, maybe on administration day, medication administration day or the next day. Um, but like Lillian said, it should not be interfering with daily life. And so my side effects, are so mild, like a little nausea, I think maybe the first few weeks when I first started, mild constipation, um, but like I take iron too and all sorts of, like that was not a new problem for me. So like nothing that was not easily managed, I know TMI, but I think what's important is that we can help and there are strategies and, and interventions for these side effects. And I always tell people too, like the side effects initially are to be expected, should be mild and manageable. And I get how frustrating that is because you were ready to jump into your healthy eating pattern. And I think that's what's hard for people is they go and they do these, they're getting their medication. They do these healthy groceries. They're ready to eat the chicken salads every day and then they can't, or they're disinterested. So I can get how that's really frustrating. And also I'm seeing as members are progressing through the program and titrating up their doses, and maybe they're not seeing it as a side effect, they're almost happy sometimes to have this like total appetite suppression where they don't want to eat at all. And that is something I caution people about is the appetite suppression should work in a way where you want to eat three balanced healthy meals a day and then you can avoid snacking between meals, but you are interested in dinner. Like you should still have that ongoing self-reflection of hunger signals, which is bizarre for people who have always been insanely hungry. Now I know what a little bit of hunger and a little bit of fullness feels like. And it's like, whoa, that's what normal people feel like. That should still be occurring. So I think sometimes people are really looking for this really quick rapid weight loss and these huge numbers that they're seeing on TikTok people talking about. And they're almost excited for the first time in their life to not have to eat, not want to eat, but that's not the goal. So sometimes I'm, I'm bringing people back to reality that we care about like your muscles and your bones and your hair. And there's more to nutrition than weight loss. And I want you to feel good and have energy. And I want you to want to eat. And I want you to be excited about food. And I want Christmas dinner to still be tasty. Right? Yeah. And so sort of working quality of life, food quality of life matters. And if you cannot enjoy your favorite foods anymore at all, then we've gone too far. So I think that's, an un, that's a side effect that a lot of people don't talk about. Like the total appetite suppression is is not the goal. And yeah. people are nervous to say that, like to say that out loud to their clinician because they're so excited that they're losing so much weight. So that's a, it's a difficult conversation sometimes because mm. folks really are happy to drink three protein shakes a day and call it a day. And <laughs> uh, sometimes I have to kind of work on that with folks about, well, let's talk about how we sustain this for a lifetime. What are we learning if we're only eating three protein shakes a day? We're not, we're not gaining any nutrition or health skills. We're just yeah. riding this wave of appetite suppression. Yeah. So about like developing that different relationship with food a little bit, right? Where we're not just thinking about food as the bad guy, or I have a very bad relationship with food, but also the other things food do besides the maybe you're like food just makes me gain weight but food also does a lot of other things for you and it, it may not just be for nutrition or fuel it may be for the holidays like carrying on a tradition enjoying a birthday with family member it could be a lot of other things it serves more purposes so that can be understandably maybe a little scary um but i totally agree with summer like i think that you should totally still be able to enjoy food and look forward to eating um, and understand that that's very normal. Yeah. We get, we get patients who are, they're losing. First of all, our guideline is we try not to go past one and a half percent on average of total body weight loss per week. So if you're 200 pounds and you're losing 
four pounds a week. That's 2%. So um, we try not to get to that point. If you're losing four pounds or 200 pounds in, per week, we go, hey, maybe we need to either stay the same dose or back off on it. And what people will say is that I, I still have hunger. I need I need to up the dose. And it's like, you probably need to eat more. <laughs> so it's like maybe that's a, you're losing weight too quickly. You need to eat more and that will take care of your hunger. So you're right. We're not treating the appetite per se. It, it, we are, we're, we're indirectly, but like we, we want to make sure we're treating like the obesity, the adiposity, but that doesn't mean that we just shut off your appetite completely. Cause as you said, I tell, I tell people yeah. it should take the edge off. Yes. It should take, that's perfect. It should take the, I want seconds drive away. It should take the random snack for boredom away. Mm -hmm. It should take the going out to a restaurant and needing an appetizer and a meal and a dessert. Now you can order your meal and eat half and call it a day, right? It should take the edge off. It shouldn't make you, you know, three protein shakes a day. Perfect. Anything else to share with uh, the listeners on nutrition, weight loss that we didn't cover? Well, I think it's important to maybe go back and, you know, we were a little sarcastic in the beginning, like the vegans and the ketos and the, all of that, like you, members know their bodies better than we could ever know mm-hmm. their own bodies. And if a low carb lifestyle works for you and fits into your lifestyle and it's realistic and sustainable and you enjoy eating that way, we can absolutely support that. You're vegan or vegetarian and that's how you want to learn how to eat better can absolutely support you going that way. We just want folks to feel like they have good evidence-based knowledge with which to make their own decisions for their own body. Um, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I just want to be a resource um, and a support and a sounding board to bounce ideas off of. And, um, you know, it's easy to think that the extremes you know, will work for people and it, and sometimes it does. And who am I to say that you shouldn't do it if it works for you? So yeah. yeah. A very patient centered approach. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I don't want people to think that, you know, we get out of yeah. and, and But then it's, are you doing the extreme because you think you have to, because right. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to. So that's the point. Like, I can eat carbs. I'm like, yes, you can eat carbs. And then, Sometimes like, let's get into the pathophysiology of these medications and how cool they are for helping you handle your carbs. Because that's just like the, treating the insulin resistance for some of these folks is the key to treating their obesity. And um, now you can eat some carbs and you'll actually metabolize it correctly. And it's like, wow, this is what I was missing my whole life. So it's really cool. cool. I'm really, I'm really grateful to be a part of this whole process because I think this is groundbreaking and I'm excited to see, you know, where these medications go in the future. Cause this is just the beginning. And, mm-hmm. uh, I used to work in a bariatric, you know, in a hospital that had a bariatric program. And I think back to all of these people that I helped then, you know, six years ago, gosh, if only they could have had access to these medications. Very cool. Lillian, anything, yeah. any last remarks? I think I'll actually just piggyback off of what Summer was saying is that we're dietitians and what does that actually mean? We're not food police. Yeah. <laughs> and I would never want you to be scared to talk to a dietitian and get your wrists slapped for something. We would like to be the source of information or clarity for anybody who has questions. There are no dumb questions about nutrition or food. There may be questions about food or diets that we've never even heard of. And we'll be very (laughs) honest with you. Like, Oh, I've never actually heard of that. Is that a new thing? Um, (laughs) So we would rather be the ones that you feel really comfortable with coming to talking to, especially if clinicians tend to be more busy um, about anything, food, nutrition, potentially lifestyle related, gut health, sleep, you know, we're going to help in any way that we can, but I just love to talk to people who are who want to double check with me about something that they may have read online from a different source. Not to say that online is 
never, I mean, I Google things all the time too, but just to make sure that you are in a good place and you're doing things that you feel are, you're comfortable with doing rather than following what somebody else said online that made them successful and not understanding their whole picture and what else is going on in their lives to do that. So just want you to be very comfortable with coming to us as a team. And that's how I really picked people to join my team is I really like people's personalities. They're super open and approachable and everyone's super kind. So don't be scared to reach out to a dietitian. Very good. Thank you too for coming on. Um, and if anybody listening wants to share this with a friend or family member, you think it would be helpful, go ahead and do that. And if you are part of Sequence and you haven't talked to one of our awesome dietitians yet, uh, reach out and, and request a visit. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for having thanks us. For having us. This is fun. <laughs>